we want to graph the absolute value function y or g of x equals negative one half times the absolute value of the quantity dx minus three plus four. This equation is the standard form of an absolute value function which is y equals a times the absolute value of the quantity x minus h plus k where the values of a, h, and k transform the graph of the parent or basic absolute value function shown here. Let's begin by determining the values of a, h, and k and describing the type of transformation. We'll notice how a is equal to negative one-half. So because a is negative, we have a reflection across the x-axis, and because the absolute value of a is positive one-half, we have a vertical compression by a factor of one-half, which will make the graph wider. Notice inside the absolute value, the form is x minus h, and we have x minus three, and therefore h is positive three. So because h is positive three, we have a shift of right three units. And then finally notice that k is equal to positive four, because k is positive four, we also have a shift up four units. So to summarize, a is equal to negative one half, which gives a reflection across the x-axis and a vertical compression by a factor of one half, and the graph opens down. Again, the graph opens down because of the reflection or because A is negative. Because H is positive three, we have a shift right three units, and because K is four, we have a shift up four units, and the vertex is three comma four. Let's verify the transformation using graphing software, and then we'll come back and graph it by hand. Let's first change the value of A to negative one half, which will reflect the graph across the x-axis and also perform a vertical compression by a factor of one half. So if we take a look at this point on the parent function, which is two comma two, if we multiply the y coordinate of two by negative one half, two times negative one half is negative one, which gives us a corresponding point after the reflection and vertical compression, which is two comma negative one. And notice how this point here is negative two comma two. Again, if we multiply the y coordinate of two by negative one half, that gives us negative one. The corresponding point is two comma negative one, this point here. And now let's change h to three. Notice when h is three, the graph is shifted right three units. And then finally, k is positive four, which will shift the graph up four units. Here's the final graph of the given absolute value function. So going back to our work, let's now graph this by hand. Let's first perform the reflection across the x-axis and the vertical compression by a factor of one-half by multiplying the y-coordinates of the points on the basic or parent absolute value function shown here by negative one-half. We'll notice how the vertex is at the origin, or zero comma zero. If we multiply the y-coordinate of zero by negative one-half, we still have the ordered pair zero comma zero. So this point is the vertex after the reflection and vertical compression. And to avoid fractions, let's use points where the y-coordinates are multiples of two. Let's use two comma two and negative two comma two. Again, we multiply the y-coordinates by negative one-half. Two times negative one-half is negative one, and therefore the corresponding point after the reflection and vertical compression is going to be two comma negative one, which is this point here. And then using this point, two times the negative one-half is also negative one, giving us a corresponding point of negative two comma negative one, which is this point here. So this would be the graph after the reflection and vertical compression. Notice how it only takes the vertex and one point on the left and right of the vertex to make a nice graph after the transformation. And now we'll take these three key points and shift them right three units and up four units. Let's go ahead and start with the vertex. We will shift the vertex right three and up four. This is the vertex of the graph of the given absolute value function. And now let's shift this point right three and up four. So right three, up four. And let's also shift this point right three and up four. And now we have enough points to make a nice graph 
of the given absolute value function. And to avoid any confusion, let's erase the green function. Our final graph is the blue function, which looks like this. To verify this graph, we can always make a table of values, which I've done here on this slide. You may want to pause the video and verify that these points are on the graph of our final absolute value function. I hope you found this helpful.